Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by, I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be looking at another Glock clone that is out on the market. It's actually fairly new to the market from what I can tell. It's only been out for maybe a month or two. And I stumbled across this just through the emails that I get from Classic Firearms. Um, they posted a, uh, a link to it. I looked at it and for the price, I was like, eh, I can't pass this up. I'll give it a try and see what it's all about. Let you guys see my first impressions of this and um, bring some more awareness to it. What are we talking about? We are talking about the Ermox Defense X-Fire or maybe Crossfire. I'm not exactly sure. I've heard people say Crossfire, I've heard X-Fire. Uh, for this video, we're gonna call it the X-Fire. I may be wrong about that, but at the end of the day, it's my video, I don't care. <laughs> but essentially what this is, and something that sets this apart from all the other Glock clones is twofold. Number one, the price point. Coming in right around that $350 mark is very, very interesting. And number two, this is an all metal frame Glock clone at that. But before we dive into this pistol and my experience with it so far, my question to you guys is, what's your carry pistol right now? For me, it's a P365X Macro Comp or a CZ P10C. Those are the two pistols that I interchange back and forth. I really do like everything about those pistols. And if I'm not carrying those, it might be a revolver. We'll talk about that in a different video, but I wanna hear what you guys are doing and what is your favorite budget pistol? That's another great question. Let me know down in the comment section down below. Okay, so I've had this for a couple of weeks now and have just been able to get it out to the range over the last two days. When it came into my FFL, which is American Cash Exchange, I really do appreciate all of their support for the channel. But uh, I was kind of surprised actually. I wasn't sure what to expect for $350. And when I opened the case on this, I was like, oh, wow, okay, that's, that's kind of interesting. Feels good in the hand. All right, it's got some interesting features as well. So let's talk about that. Essentially, this is a Glock 19 clone. So you're going to have four inch barrel. It's going to be 15 round mag capacity, and it's going to come in at an unloaded weight of 28 ounces. So definitely heavier because of that metal frame. Some of the other things that you're going to notice is that it does come with front and rear fiber optic sights. It has some lightning cuts here on the slide. It's got a pick section on the dust cover, which is something I really do like because you have the ability to you know, get something really small or really large to attach to that dust cover. For me, it was the TLR1 that I was using yesterday at the two gun competition. So that's something I really did like. Instead of that one pick section that you get with a Glock, this is going to help you be a little bit more um, open to the different items that you add to this. This is going to have a trigger dingus. Uh, so the safety is on the trigger, which is something that I really do like and what you would expect from a Glock as well. It does have a cock indicator on the back, which is still recessed, but you can see it. If you were to uh, go ahead and shoot this, you're going to see it protrude out. And then as the uh, firearm goes off, it will recess completely. So you can't see that uh, cocked indicator anymore. As soon as you run that slide, you're going to be able to see it again. So that is actually a good safety feature. So if you are carrying appendix or carrying it as EDC, uh, you can put your thumb over the back of the slide. And as you are holstering this, if something binds up with that trigger, you're going to feel that cocked indicator start protruding into your thumb, which then you can stop, see what's going on and uh, fix the problem and then reholster safely. So that's something I really, really do like. As you can tell, it does come optics ready and I did put this Siley Wolf Pro on here. Talk about uh, the mount up of this here in just a little bit because that's one of my complaints about this particular pistol. 
Outside of that, uh, it is exactly what you would expect from a Glock clone. A lot of similar parts on the inside, but enough difference for it to be kind of its own pistol as well. One of the interesting things that I did do was I um, swapped out the double captive recoil spring that comes with this pistol with a Gen 5 MOS recoil spring. And as you can see, the Gen 5 is a bit longer, but I went ahead and put it in here and ran one magazine through it and had no problems. That first round was <laughs> kind of surprised me because I was worried that something bad was going to happen. So I did flinch really, really bad, but the uh, 15 rounds ran no problem. So you should have some compatibility between Glock parts and this, but to what extent, I'm not 100% sure because there, there is enough difference on the internals for that compatibility to may not be there. And unfortunately, I don't have the means to fully test that. If I do a follow-up video on this, I am going to take it to a Glock Armor and have him take a look at it to see what he can diagnose. And we'll talk about that in a future video. One of the other things that I really did like uh, is the fact that it did come with two um, of these grip panels. It came with black, but I swapped those out for these red. They're plastic. They're not very, I would say, robust, but uh, I will say that it does give it a really nice aesthetic. Uh, with that red anodized trigger dingus, it does look pretty nice. So there's that. Feels good in the hand, um, adequate texturing for it to be in your hand. I wouldn't say it's really great. It's not over aggressive and it's not under aggressive. It's just like one step above under aggressive. So I would like to see actually some uh, crosshatch texturing on the front and rear if uh, Ermox Defense would do a Gen 2 of this. So. That's been kind of the rundown of this so far. It does come with two 15 round magazines and these are like one for one Glock clones. So uh, that was something I really was surprised to see as well. So no problem there running these magazines uh, in the first 100 rounds at the indoor range and the 150 rounds that I put through it at the two gun competition, it ran just fine. So 250 rounds, Feed, fire, and eject, no issues whatsoever. So good on them so far. So what has been my shooting experience with this? Uh, it has pretty decent accuracy. Coupled with a red dot at 25 yards, I was getting about an inch and a half or so uh, groups. Uh, so I was pleased with that. That's all shooting offhand, uh, so standing, not rested against anything. That's how I zero my optics um, most of the time for pistols that I review. No problems there. Uh, I took it right out of the box and ran it. I didn't disassemble it and clean it or lube it. That's the way I do things because I really want to push these pistols to their absolute limit as far as what they can get away with. And 250 rounds, no problems whatsoever. Now, do I recommend that for you guys who would go out and purchase this? No, I would say definitely get it home, disassemble it, clean it, oil it, and then, you know, take it to the range and start running it. But for me, as a reviewer, I wanna really put it to the test, run it hard, run it dirty, and see where the failure points are. So far, none, so that's really, really good. Out at the two gun competition, I did get some people stopping me and saying, hey, what uh, what pistol is that? Pulled it out of the holster so I could show them, you know, safely. And uh, they're like, I've never heard of this before. And I was like, yeah, I know. And they're like, well, I thought it was one of those new Dan Weston pistols because from the holster, it looks kind of like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't have that kind of money right now to throw around. <laughs> but uh, again, at that two gun competition, um, it did exactly what it needed to do. Uh, if it had any it's issues no whatsoever, as far as accuracy goes, it was the Indian, not the arrow. So that is um, something to take away, especially on one iteration where I was shooting from a seated position inside a vehicle. I had two targets to my left. 
shot those, no problem. Good hits on that. And then the three targets on my right, one round into the A zone on each one of those. I was actually really surprised at its accuracy uh, and was like, oh, okay. It's a lot more accurate than I was expecting. So <laughs> that's, uh, was pleasantly, I was pleasantly surprised at that. Um, one of the things that you will see is that uh, Ermox is touting a five and a half pound trigger pull on this. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not finding that. I'm finding it more at six and a half pounds. But if you guys want to see what the trigger looks like, uh, here is your take up like you would expect on a Glock. And then you hit that kind of wall. It's a bit of a false wall and it starts to creep ever so slightly. You're stacking, 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 and then finally it'll break over. So you're getting about um, maybe a millimeter or two of creep once you hit that wall and then it breaks over. The reset is pretty short actually. Tactile, audible, so no complaints there break again, stack, 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 and then breaks over. So uh, I'm getting six and a half or more pounds each and every single time I use my gauge. So take that for what it's worth. Shooting it under pressure at the two gun match, I really didn't notice it that much. So there is that piece of it as well. All right, so let's talk about some of the cons with this. Um, one of the biggest things that I have a huge complaint on, and it's not just this pistol, I've ran into it with the uh, Beretta APXA1 as well, and that's going to be the hardware for the optics mounting situation. The cover plate for the cut have two screws that hold it down, obviously, and Ermox does provide an Allen wrench for you to take those out and put the two plates that they include in with the box, which I thought was really nice. They do include a RMR cut, and then they also offer a doctor cut, I believe, as well. But the biggest problem that I ran into was trying to take those two screws out of the cover plate. I ended up stripping them both out. And I would really like to see manufacturers invest a little bit more money into providing better hardware when it comes to those screws and the uh, tools to take those out as well. I ended up having to go to the store and buy an extraction bit for my drill and was able to extract both of those out after some effort and then was able to get this uh, plate on and run it and so far so good no problems there. So just kind of annoyance with that piece of it so take that as you will. <laughs> Another interesting thing is magazine compatibility. And that is something that was really interesting. As mentioned, these two Glock 19 clone mags fit and work really, really well. No problems with this whatsoever. But one of the things that I did run into is utilizing other magazines. I did run a, a Men 2 magazine and found that on the last round, so you got one round left in there, insert this mag, it seats real well, but it locks back on that last round. So that's kind of an issue. So go ahead and drop this. We have a Magpul Glock 19 mag here. Again, seats real well, locks back on that last round. So that's another issue. Here's a Glock 19 Gen 5 magazine. Inserts seats real well, no problem there. Locks on that last round. So that is something really, really interesting. Move back to the Ermox included magazine. Seats, no problem. And feeds, no problem. So uh, I would suspect that this is going to work better with like Gen 3 magazines than it would for the uh, Glock 19 Gen 5 magazines. Unfortunately, I don't have any Glock um, Gen 3 or Gen 4 mags, so I'll see if I can find one and follow up with you guys later. 
All right, so the other thing that I wanted to talk about is holster compatibility, and that's another kind of concern that I have with this. With it being a Glock clone, you would expect it to fit Glock holsters, but unfortunately, I'm running into some problems. Now, at my two-gun match, I ran a Blackhawk Omnivore, and that is a great holster for someone like myself who is constantly changing out pistols because it attaches to the... Uh, light that you would have on your pistol, specifically a Streamlight TLR1. So added the TLR1 here, fits into the Omnivore, and no problems whatsoever. It's a, uh, a level two retention on that, which is something else I like, especially for competitions. No complaints there. And I've had no complaints with all the other pistols that I've used with it as well. Unfortunately though, I have this uh, Bravo concealment holster here that I used for my um, Glock 47 with the Glock 19 slide on it. And unfortunately, it doesn't fit. And I believe that it has to do with the size of the frame and that larger pick section that you have there as well. So that is going to be a concern when it comes to individuals who are trying to save money and spend, you know, $350 or less on a pistol, you know, an inexpensive red dot, and then also want to find kind of an inexpensive uh, holster as well that may not be out there for this as of yet. So this is going to be relegated to like a nightstand gun, you know, carrying it concealed may not be a viable option for you guys unless you want to carry it like in a leather holster. I don't recommend that because there's no external thumb safety on this but at the end of the day, you do you on that. So out of everything, I would say that this is a viable option for uh, someone to use as an inexpensive pistol to get into shooting competitions, uh, maybe use it for nightstand. Uh, it was a lot of fun to shoot. It's been reliable. 250 rounds later, no issues whatsoever that I can report to you guys. Um, I am going to, again, take it to a Glock Armor to take a look at uh, some of the parts compatibility to see how much we can get away with as far as that goes. So we'll do a follow-up video once we get into that 500 to our 1,000 round range. We will do a follow-up on this and uh, let you guys know. But my question to you guys is, what do you guys think? For 350 bucks, is this something that you would use for nightstand or a truck gun or something like that? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Just so you guys know, I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent about this pistol. Uh, this was not sent to me. I did purchase this with my own money. So uh, I have no obligation to say how great it is or anything like that. I just wanted to make sure that I'm completely transparent with you guys on that aspect of it. So you know that I'm not putting my own implicit bias into uh, this review. Let you guys know that. Uh, so you can make your own decisions on purchasing these tools to save your life. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. I really do appreciate everybody's support of the channel. If you could give me a like and comment down in the comment section for that algorithm, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for all the support. Share it with your friends. That would be cool as well. We'll catch you guys later. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye y'all.